Hello, yes, it's me, I'm back again, and I'm going to do a little platter rim. Getting a bit nostalgic for one. Back's been turned. Looking at it, I would say uh, a piece of sycamore. Um, and it might look very nice and plain, but it ain't gonna stay like that. So it's already got a recess on the back and been finished and waxed on the back and some time ago I turned the outside and now it's ready to be ruined. Now I'm going for a rough look so I'm not going to cut that back. Don't mind if it's running. Are my bearings sounding a bit funny? Something sounding a bit funny. Time for some heat. Now it's turned on, time for some heat. I've got some Montana now. Goes a little bit thicker than the ebonizing latter. Nozzle is a little uh, unhappy. So building up a nice thick Texturing, bubbling, blistering. And it's helpful, I can see areas where I need to put a bit more paint. And then the next stage, a grubby old palette and some iridescence. Well, not iridescence, interference. Interference paint. Phew, it's pongy. Put them back on and let's get on with it. Yeah, golden acrylics, interference, blue. Now, this is one of those special paints that isn't the colour that it says it is. And you don't need very much of it. Just scoop out what's in the lid there. You can see when it's spread out, that's when you get the colour. Should have put that on my other fingers. Yes, it's just finger painting today. Subtle. You know how I love subtle. It does gather a bit in places and get a bit thick. Need to work through those. So I've got a lump, thin it out. A bit like putting gilt cream on I guess, which is also another thing that you could use for this. And lastly, <laughs> maybe not, but we'll see. 
Interference Gold. Thin it out. Catch the top of the texture. Oh, I'm liking the look of this. Truly subtle effect. Bit of space out here on the edges. I really must try this on a vase one day. Now it could have a, a lacquer over it, but if I'm going to put a lacquer over it, then it's going to take ages to finish off. So I'm not today. I'm going to do without and just leave it with the paint finish for now so I can get this finished. Just going to just clean up the inside. I've left it with enough depth to take a bit more out. Usual finish on the inside, cut and polish. What you see there partly is the Partly is the effect of not having sealed and lacquered it. So I've gone back to, to the paint there, but it's actually given a, a nice sort of inner rim, a bit of a nice definition there. So I quite like that. I do actually also like the swirls of dust that are still on here. They do make the texture stand out a lot more, but they obviously won't last. So there we go. Cut and polish on the inside. Could have done a little bit of a better sanding job there. But the main thing is that it's a smooth curve all the way right to the center. Be careful with your sanding because you can make it a little bit of a bit dished there if you spend too long on that sanding. So you've got to gauge that right. And there we go. This weekend's quick and easy little technique. Maybe a bit better colour distribution would be uh, an improvement. But I do like the, the, the effect that that gives. You saw how simple and easy it was to achieve. Come on to the overhead. So look, that is a little bit messy. I wouldn't leave that. To, to improve that, I would come back with some black and then just go back over. But there are bits of it where it's worked really nicely around here, around these edges here around here and with a perhaps a little bit of a shine on it on the outside that might lift it even a little a little more but I'll get some stills put them up for you while I waffle on saying how wonderful it's been to get into the workshop this weekend and uh, indeed it has uh, yeah it needs a shine it does need a shine but that is uh, a, one way of brightening up a dull Saturday afternoon. The paints that I used, you've got choices. There are uh, iridescent paints, chestnut make iridescent paints, and um, other makers, Joe Sonia, make iridescent paints. You could try acrylic paints, other colours. 
um, or metallic paints over there as well. You see them in lots of the other videos that I've done. And uh, let me know how you get on. Leave a comment below. But don't forget, if you are creating fumes in your workshop, wear a vapor mask. Right, I'm off indoors to edit this. See you next time. Let's get a bit of shine on it.